Hi, I'm Sean. And I'm Patrick. Welcome to Swazzle Puppet Studio. In this episode, we're going to teach you how to break down a puppet design. For the first season of Swazzle Puppet Studio, we are partnering with a very talented artist and illustrator named Eric Scales. Check him out on Instagram. His handle is ericscales13. The puppet we're going to be making is a character that he's created called Eric the Elephant. The cool thing about the particular design we've chosen is it's not going to be an easy translation. It doesn't look like a puppet as people think of them. So by choosing a character that doesn't translate very easily into puppetry, we think it will present very unique challenges and show you how to make a puppet that isn't just a ball with a mouth. We're going to build Eric the Elephant. So the very first thing that we want to do is break down this design. So we have a design that we're going to build. We've got a profile view, a head-on view, a back view. So the first thing you want to do is you take your design and you blow that up large. You can blow it up either on a photocopier like we have done, or you can use an overhead projector. Now these are blown up to the scale that we think our puppet is going to be. Here's the thing about puppets they're not as big as you think they are. Most people, when they build their first puppet, tend to build the puppets larger than they need to be. I think there's this idea that puppets are big, and that makes sense because where have you seen puppets like this? Well, you've seen them on television, or you've seen them in the movies, and so you're used to seeing them larger than life. So the idea is that puppets are really large, but actually they're not, they're very small. And the reason why you wanna make them small is because they're gonna be on your hand. And this is where your performance is gonna come from. And the bigger this gets, the harder it is to control and the less nuance you're going to get. So hot tip, make your puppet smaller than you think it's going to be. Don't worry, you think it's too small? Trust me, it's going to get bigger. The more you add fleece here, foam there, feathers, whatever, naturally puppets will get larger. Let's break down this design. In this design, start to see what shapes are here. And once you understand the shapes, you'll have a better sense of the best way to approach this build. Uh, I look at this and I go, well, what do I see here? I see a circle. There's a basic circle here. And then there's this topper that's a bit of a, kind of like a pear shape. The circle will be important because this will be one of the first shapes that we build when it comes time to make the body. I feel like it kind of comes, a nice little shape like this up here. We'll need to start figuring out what's happening with this trunk. So this trunk, there's something here is gonna connect. Now, this mouth is giving me a bit of a clue, and already as I just kinda do this, something tells me maybe what's happening with this mouth, it's actually gonna come around like this. So it feels a bit like the same character. That's a little dimensionality here. We see that he does have a nice lip. We're gonna give ourselves a little bit of a lip here as we turn this into a 3D form. We will have to find a way to make the trunk make sense in relation to the eyes. This area here is pretty close together. Let's look at this design up here. We can see that this is kind of tight together. If I just take a segment of it, maybe from the front, it has a shape like this to it. Now the ears, we want to give the ears a little bit of fullness as well. Now this part of the ear, I imagine, is gonna be just material. This part here and this part here I think it has some nice foam built up to it. Uh, hair, fun, we don't know what those are yet. Maybe feathers, maybe whatever. The other trick is gonna be how these glasses sit on the face. Now in an illustration, you can cheat a little bit. You can have this tuck in behind the ear. But as you see in real life, unless it comes in like that, it's gonna be a tricky thing to come up with. So there might be some puppet logic we work in here. Maybe the glasses are just floating on the head. The arms, again, some roundness to this. One of these hands will be separate, I'm sure. But there's also a nice plane that we're seeing already that gives us a, a clue as to maybe what this palm shape will be and the stubbiness of the fingers. What's nice about Eric's artwork is this innate sense of dimensionality that he has. I feel like even though there's this character that exists in the two-dimensional world, he's ready for 3D. This is great too. Another shape that we want to make sure we maintain is that a little curve to the back that he has. It's kind of like a body shape, like a bean. But I think what we're gonna do is give ourselves some liberty and give a neck that's just a little thicker than this. It'll still feel like the character, but you wanna make sure that your wrist 
can fit in there. See, I see I'm beginning to think this mouth, we're gonna have to open it here, so maybe we're doing a little, you know, maybe it, this is where it's gonna come around. This is where our lip happens. Look how expressive this character is. Now, of course, this is sort of the animated version of this puppet. You know, his mouth grows and, and shrinks and it's frowny and then it's happy. The idea that I see in this is expression. This character has to be expressive. And the way you make a puppet really be expressive is flexibility. You wanna be able to do as much as you can with your hands as possible. And the way to do that is to pick materials that are nice and soft and flexible. I think this head is soft foam that's carved. And I think this body is gonna be patterned foam as well as the arms and the legs. The trunk, I'm not sure. It might be sculpted, carved, or it could be patterned. So this is the first thing you wanna do. First thing you wanna do is take your design and then break it down into these very basic shapes. That way you know what you're making. It's very easy on a puppet build to get lost in the weeds. But if you have this, this is your foundation. This is something you'll be able to return to where some of your initial ideas have already been answered. Your design has been broken down and now it's time for puppet building to begin. Don't forget to like and subscribe and don't miss a single episode. I did like what you liked with the, the head here tonight.